let's take a look at using our macro pad or keyboard as a notification LED and integrating it directly into Twitch stream alerts and simple scripts. I mean, come on, all these insanely nice keyboards nowadays already have RGB per key lighting and most we can get are some reactive typing effects. A few things are required for this. Your keyboard does need to have vial support and it needs to be set up with RGB matrix lighting. You can check my macro pad video to get started with vial if you haven't set that up already. How this actually works is quite simple. It's using the raw HID API that vial provides and yes, this is all the information I could find about this API online. This is an interface that lets your computer talk to your keyboard with other data than keystrokes. So we can send commands to the keyboard to turn on specific LEDs, and the keyboard can also send commands back. The first script we have here is the API that sends over the commands to the keyboard, but also exposes the web server that we can send commands to from other devices or apps. Here we can use StreamerBot, for example, which is an app you can download that will run commands, depending on your stream alerts, channel point rewards, or other commands on Twitch. In here you can set up actions. One of my actions, for example, is a follower alert that just sends a fetch request to the keyboard API and turns on all LEDs in blue. At the same time, I'm also setting a timeout, so the LEDs return to the previous state after 30 seconds. Here you can see what this would look like on stream. Rate notifications are red and follow notifications are blue. On this command, you can set which LEDs should turn on and to which color. This allows you to map multiple alerts to one keyboard grid if you like. You can get the LED positions based on their index, which is basically just the order in which the LEDs are connected on the keyboard. Internally, the script uses a notification stack, so things that get pushed onto the display early stay and new notifications get layered on top. That means if you have a longer notification sent early and then just a quick notification afterwards, it will return to the previous notification once the timeout of the new one is up. What this also allows you is you can put a persistent widget at the first position in the stack. For example, like a clock or progress bar widget that I have done here. This is just another script using Node.js to trigger the API and set the current time of day as a progress bar onto all LEDs. Of course, you can set the order of the LEDs. For better readability, the LED that is not completely filled in in the progress bar goes through the entire color cycle. So one LED shows four hours of time, where red, green, and blue always mark one hour, and orange, cyan, and purple mark the half hour spots. This makes it actually possible to tell the time up to 30 minutes accurately quite easily. This has actually been really fun as I could tell the time just by passively looking at the macro pad without having an actual clock there. And as viewers had the opportunity to get my attention with commands or I got notified when raids or subscriptions were happening. All that while I didn't even need to look up to my PC while I was working on something on my desk. I'm really happy with how this macro pad turned out. Overall, this was a really fun project and it got from like a simple macro pad where I just wanted to swap the case to now a full-fledged rotary encoder LED matrix display that also handles apps. So watch the playlist if you're interested in building your own. Here's a really quick walkthrough through the API. First, we have the simple get request to create a notification. You can supply the hue, saturation, and value as numbers between 0 and 255, as well as the indexes of the LED separated by comma and a timeout in seconds. If you create one of these notifications with something like StreamerBot, you get returned the ID for that specific notification. You can then take a look with the widgets query to see which widgets are currently on the macro pad. Here you see I have the progress bar widget down below and then the notification up top. After the timeout is over, it will be cleared from this view. You can also send the ID of the widget to the delete widget API as a JSON ID string, and then it will be removed from the stack as well. For more advanced things, feel free to check the API documentation on GitHub. Of course, there's a lot more we can do with this. I have another example script of a Promodoro timer that reminds you of taking breaks. All the source code is available on GitHub and feel free to either implement your own apps or leave a comment here or on the Discord server for things that you would like to see in here. Have fun with that and see you next time.